Today we're looking at the fastest way to match your favorite Hollywood film grades in Photoshop using Retouch For Me's Color Match plugin. Here in Photoshop we'll see that we have our background layer and then a duplicate that's called layer one that is also converted to a smart object because the color match plugin will work as a smart filter and allow you to adjust this after the fact. Now with our smart object selected, we could head up to filter, retouch for me, and then color match. And once the plugin opens, you'll see that it has the previous reference image that I was using that is already set up here. Now, as a quick overview, we'll take a look at the left-hand side. We can toggle before and after. We can also use the space bar here in the little viewport, and that's going to give us our before and after the adjustments. And then we can hold down to preview the skin mask, which these skin values or skin tones are going to show up in red here. And that's because this is currently the more orange section that we have in our original image. Now on the left here as well, we have the pan and zoom tool as well as the brush eraser and then mask invert. So we can go in and paint specific masks if we wanted to. Now up top, we have the blend slider, which is a value of zero to 100 that would work as normal opacity and then kind of a mega opacity <laughs> or really pushing the bounds as we move from 100 to 200% here. And we can see those adjustments take place. Now on the right hand side, we'll see that we have our reference panel with an X here. And this X is going to allow us to clear our reference image. Now, if I press the space bar in our viewport, you'll see that there are adjustments being made. And that's from the luminance, the color and the smoothing values that we currently have. These values are the ones that I like to use most often with this plugin. So I'm just going to leave them for now and click on load reference. Now you'll see the reference examples that I've have here, and these are all pulled from shotdeck.com. It's one of my favorite tools to use for inspiration and cinematic resources for grades and so on. And I think it's really cool that now I can go in and actually mix different looks with this color match plugin. So we'll select one of our references here. And after it's done processing, you'll see that now we have a color matching grade to the reference that we've now pulled. Below our reference image here, we can use the next and previous buttons to very quickly flip through a ton of different looks without much work. Once we find one that we like, we can take a look at the sliders that are down below here. The skin tone is going to adjust that skin mask. I honestly like to leave this one at zero because I like to do a lot of my skin masking and different things in Photoshop after the fact. So I like to focus on the luminance the color and these smoothing sliders. The luminance at a value of 100 is going to do its best to match the luminance values from the reference image that you're using to generate this LUT. The color slider is going to be your opacity slider for the color influence. And then smoothing is going to allow you to blend the colors together. So if you have some high contrasting areas that can help kind of blend some of those colors so they're not so crunched. Now, if we bring the smoothing here all the way up to 100, we'll see that we're going to get some nice darker tones. And then if we head back to zero, this is going to be a bit more closely matching the reference here. So we can flip through a couple different looks here, and then maybe we'll take our smoothing back up to about 50%, kind of meet it halfway here, and then continue on. And I think this one's actually going to work out quite well for the image that we're using. Below our reference section, we have the LUT section, which allows us to load in a different LUT. So if we head into LUT Manager, we'll see that there are a ton of different LUTs here. And we can just head down to the bottom or we can check out some of the user uploads. And we can see that there are quite a few different looks here. Maybe we'll find something that's a little bit more on the orange side. We'll just take this NY Sleep here. We can double click that image and that will load it up for us. And we'll see that we have the LUT blend slider here at the bottom, which is going to allow us to adjust the way that this influence is taking place. We'll blend a little bit more and pull in some of that color from the LUT that we had there. I think 20% is, is going to work out just fine for us. And now again, just like the reference section, we have the previous and 
the next buttons here. So we can click through a few different looks that we have there as well. And I think we'll head back to our NY sleep maybe. So now if we want to, we can just apply this image or we can export a LUT to use for video in Photoshop, other applications and so on. So we can click on export LUT, navigate to a place that we can save this. And we'll just call this one Earthy2. You can see that I have another one saved here and it does save as a cube file. So it's quite compatible with other software. And then we'll click apply. We'll see when we get back to Photoshop's interface that we do have the smart filter with color match plugin here. And we can turn that off, select our background layer and then load in the LUT that we just saved. So we'll add a color lookup adjustment layer. We can head to our properties and click on load 3D LUT and then load 3D LUT again so that we can navigate to our previously saved LUT. And there we go. So now we have this LUT applied and we can work with this just as a normal layer here right inside Photoshop. Now the cool part about this is that we can now copy this adjustment layer and head to a different image and paste this in. And we'll see here when we look between the two that the colors as a whole are matching, but the values aren't. We do have quite a bit of a difference here between our darker black values that we have in this image and our new image that we're working with. So one of the things that I like to do if I'm working with a series of images is I like to match the black and white points as best as possible so that at least the new LUT will make sense there. So what we can do here is add a curves adjustment layer and we can crunch our black values a bit, maybe drop a little bit of our midtones. And this is going to bring us to a much closer point here between these two images so that they'll make sense in a series. Now, as we move on to other types of images that do have color influences and we paste in our grade, we'll see that we have quite a big difference now. And that's because we do have a lot more of these blue values that are also influencing images. And then we also have the black and white points that aren't quite aligning. So we can grab our new curves adjustment layer. We can crunch our black values a bit more, and then we could drop some of these midtones to get a little bit closer. There we go. So now we have quite a bit more of an orange look in our previous version compared to the new image. And so one of the ways that I actually like to work with this, if I'm working across, say something that's a bit more on the blue side to something that is a bit more maybe desaturated, like the previous image, is just go in and desaturate this new image to closer match the one that I created the LUT with. And so what we'll do here is we can head down to our adjustment layers, add a black and white adjustment layer. And so we'll drop the fill just a little ways here maybe something around 60 to 65%. This is just by desaturating the values that we have here. Now, another way that we could go about this is by adjusting the white balance. And so what we can do is add a new curves adjustment layer. We'll select our gray value or our gray point here with the eyedropper. And we can click on one of the more blue areas in our shot. And we'll see that now this is going to adjust and make a bit more sense. Now, as I move between these images, there's going to be a little bit less of that maybe sun glow type of look that we're going for, but as a whole, the grade makes a lot more sense. And we could further tweak these values and make some more adjustments here by adjusting the white points and so on. And there are also times where I may just duplicate my LUT layer and work with a lot more color there. So we can see how this is going to take effect as we start to make adjustments and then adjusting the fill here as needed. And this is something that I'm doing if I'm just trying to match this grade with one from a previous set. In most cases, you can just run the color match plugin for the specific series of images that you're working with and you can get a lot better results very quickly.
And there you have it, Retouch Formi's Color Match plugin works like a charm. Now it is important to know that not every grade is going to work for every image, kind of like what we saw here. You will have to make adjustments to the white balance or saturation or values and so on, and that's quite normal. Regardless of whether you're working on photographs or you're working in video, having to match and balance the footage across shots is its own discussion for another day. Now, until we see each other next time, hit up the Creative Nexus Discord. I'll leave a link down in the description. And until the next video, create more, say less, and stay creative. I'll see you then.